Hello, everyone. We hope everyone is having a great day today. This is Jessica from Life Clinics of America Corporate. Just wanted to uh, wish you all a fantastic day and thank you so much for coming to our webinar today. I'm just going to take a quick moment to go over the agenda here and then we'll be ready to go. So we'll turn it over to Dr. Krista. So welcome again to the webinar. This is uh, an online webinar <coughs> hosted by Dr. Krista Lauer. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to allow Dr. Krista to introduce herself so you can become more familiar with her. We're going to talk about how Life Clinics of America is a science-based approach, the challenges of life infestations, including chronic cases, Life Clinic of America program, and then at the end, what we'll do is there's a chat box. Please feel free to enter in your questions at any time during the programming, and uh, we will bring it up at the very end, and we will answer any and all questions that you might have. So thank you so much, and without any further ado, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Dr. Krista. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. I know what busy lives you all have, and uh, so for me to have the opportunity to share with you uh, about a little about myself, a little bit about our company, and our science-based approach to the very difficult challenge of head lice in the school, including some strategies for managing chronic cases, uh, is a real pleasure for me. Um, so I know that head lice is something that is very common. It's a problem that in the schools you have all faced at different times, and I'm sure that at times you have been the brunt of blame or frustration um, from irate parents as if you have any control over the situation. I also recognize that it's extremely exhausting for you to continually manage head lice. Um, there's too little of you, there's too much uh, demand on your time you have other true medical needs uh, of, that are required of you from the kids in your school. You need to, you know, administer medications at specific times. You need to deal with injuries and sicknesses and behaviors. And so trying to uh, manage head lice infestation on top of everything else is just exhausting and can be very overwhelming. So we're here to help you. And uh, I'm really excited to be able to share with you uh, what it is that we can offer you. Um, so first of all, I'd like to start with just a little bit about me and why I got into the life business. This is one of those steps in your career that you never really anticipate. Uh, I never would have projected myself as being uh, working for a life company. Um, let alone the national medical director of a life company. However, uh, when a great opportunity comes along, sometimes you just need to jump at it. I am Canadian. I don't know if you've picked that up by my accent so far. I was born and raised and trained in Canada. I practiced medicine in both British Columbia and in Ontario before moving to New Hampshire and I was in family practice in New Hampshire for over 18 years. Loved it. Uh, a couple of years ago, I moved to Utah, which is where I'm located now, and I worked in the insurance industry for a few years. I was an associate medical director uh, doing utilization management and review uh, for Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. I worked uh, virtually in New York State. It was really interesting, it was really challenging, and I learned a lot. Uh, but then the opportunity presented itself for me to join Life Clinics of America. And at first I was a little hesitant, being the life doctor. However, I met with the people here and uh, I was just so impressed by the mission of the company, by how invested everybody here really was in helping families who deal with life, not just the physical toll, but the emotional toll. I was also really impressed by the technology that went into development 
of the FDA cleared device that is used in the Lice Clinics of America clinics. Uh, the research and development was really interesting. As a family doctor and as a mom, um, I've run into life in both my personal life and my professional life, so I recognize the toll that it takes on everybody. So this was just really an exciting professional opportunity for me to do something really positive for people and to work in a company where the people are equally invested and committed and positive. So now, let's get into the, into the meat of the matter, and I'm going to share with you some of the things that I've learned from experience and that I've learned in talking to other health professionals, including nurses and doctors and school nurses, such as all of you. Um, so the facts that we're dealing with, what we know so far about lice is that the information on the CDC uh, website is not up to date and it's not accurate. And this is not to pick on the CDC, but the reason that I'm shining a spotlight on the CDC is when a family is faced with, a, you know, head lice infestation, the first thing they do is go online and research or search head lice or lice. And the CDC always pops up as one of the top, uh, the top hits. And of course, Almost everybody's heard of the CDC, so it is a trusted source of information for people. The issue with the information on the CDC website is, uh, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, the CDC estimates that the number of new cases of head lice every year, the incidence, is 6 to 12 million cases. Most of these uh, are in people the ages, children, the ages 3 to 11. So we know that this number, the incident, is really a guesstimate. And we know that because the range is so wide. I mean, there's a, a 6 million case per year range <laughs> in that number. So it's huge. Um, so, and that's, that's not the, the fault of the CDC. Getting the information is extremely difficult because the CDC replies, relies on self-reporting and they also rely on purchases, uh, purchase information from uh, retail pharmacies uh, to get that number and then they rely on professional reporting. So people such as yourselves, uh, pediatricians, family doctors. And, you know, the professional reporting, uh, there's a lot of reasons that that's inaccurate. First of all, some people may have poor access to health care. And then, of course, we know that there's a large social stigma uh, that comes along with the diagnosis of head lice. And so a lot of people don't go to see a professional and try to manage it on their own. So that, that's one of, those are the, some of the reasons why that incident is extremely wide ranging and probably inaccurate. It's, it's likely that the incidence of head lice is greater than what the CDC reports. Another reason that we know the information on the CDC website is not up to date is that they're still listing as first line treatment, treatments that we know have a very high failure rate. Um, and that leads us into the next bullet point on the slide, which is super life. We do know that super life do exist, they are real. Super lice is a term that was um, made by the media, coined by the media because it sounds kind of exciting. But really what it means are uh, lice that have genetically evolved, so they've altered their genetics so that they are now resistant to the over-the-counter, to the chemicals in the over-the-counter treatments. Namely, they have developed resistance to the pyrethrins and permethrin, which are in most over-the-counter lice treatments. There have been studies on super lice, and in 48 of the 48 states studied, so in 100% of the, the states studied, there are actually, they did find these super lice, these genetically altered lice that are resistant to the over-the-counter treatments. 
Um, and in some cases, the over-the-counter treatments were less than 25% effective. And we'll get into what this does to families, uh, both financially when they go and continue to buy these over-the-counter treatments, trying to manage a lice infestation on their own. But also, we'll get into um, what that means as far as potential chemical exposure for kids and uh, the, the long-term psychological impact of dealing with, with a lice infestation. I'm sure many of you read the study. It was in the news the last couple of weeks. It came out about two weeks ago, suggesting a possible link between the chemicals and over-the-counter lice treatments, uh, specifically the perithrins, and behavior issues. There is concern that there may be a link between these chemicals and um, some uh, behavioral problems because of the effect on neurodevelopment. And those, those behavioral issues range from anxiety to hyperactivity to social isolation and withdrawal to depression. Um, now, as a healthcare professional, I read the study. The study was not able to prove any causation uh, between, you know, between the two. However, it's certainly of significant concern that there's a potential link here. Uh, and I will be following the literature really closely to see, you know, what transpires as more studies are done. I'm sure more studies will be done given this, this information. But I think it's important for us to be aware that there is the potential for problems. The next thing we know for sure is that social behavior is changing in people based on technology. So now everybody, almost everybody, has some form of a smartphone. Um, even kids in elementary schools now have uh, cell phones and smartphones. And a major way that young people communicate now is through photographs. So they use Snapchat. They use Instagram. They post pictures on Facebook. They are gathered together looking at computer screens, playing video games. This uh, results in a lot of head-to-head -head contact. And of course, lice don't jump, they don't fly, they don't hop, uh, they don't swim, but they do transfer from one head to the other when the opportunity presents itself. And with young people putting their heads together for all sorts of selfies and photographs, uh, there's a lot more opportunity for life to spread between young people. So although there's been no conclusive research about the effects of this new social interaction on the incidence of head lice, I can tell you anecdotally that in our clinics, we have seen an increase in the number of cases of head lice in teens who are middle school aged and older teens, and even in college students, there was uh, one, one of our clinics ended up with two busloads of college students coming in all together, having been on a trip, and they all came home infested with head lice, and the college and their parents said, we can't have this, and we hired buses and piled them on the buses and took them to a clinic to be treated. So again, the CDC says most incidences of head lice occur between the ages of 3 and 11. We are certainly seeing an uptick in the number of cases in older, uh, older uh, kids, teens, and young adults. Um, so just something to keep in mind. So now, I'd like to discuss a little bit about the approach that Life Clinics of America has. Um, it's a great opportunity. This, in joining Life Clinics of America was a great opportunity for me because it gave me the ability to join a company that truly has a science-based approach to a problem that was spinning or beginning to spin out of control. And with the development of super lice and uh, genetic resistance to the over-the-counter treatments, we are only going to see this become a greater problem in the future. The exciting thing for me about Life Clinics of America is it's true science, that, uh, that the approach is, uh, is based on true science. It's not junk science. 
Uh, our clinics are not comb out services. They do not use homeopathic treatments. Uh, they have done clinical trials on all of the products that we use, and there are papers published about the device, uh, the proprietary device, the FDA cleared device that we used. Uh, there's research published in the Journal of Entomology about our technology. There's research published in the Journal of Pediatric Medicine. And we are recognized by the AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics, as an effective treatment modality. So this is true science. And I'd like to share with you a story about the inventor of our, uh, of our ARLA device, which is our FDA cleared medical device. Um, it was developed by Dr. Dale Clayton. He is a professor of biology at the University of Utah and a world-renowned life expert. He is one, he has one of only five dedicated life laboratories in the world. So when his twins came home from school with head lice one day, he thought, oh, I got this. I mean, this is my field, you know. I should be all over this. And he found that it was incredibly difficult to manage. Um, and he thought, this is not acceptable. I am a world-recognized expert in life, and here I am having difficulty managing it in my own children. From his work in Utah, which has a very, very dry climate, um, he knew that it was difficult to maintain life and that lice were highly susceptible to dehydration. And so using this information, over a 10-year period, he did research and worked to develop and ultimately to perfect the technology, which is uh, the air allay device that is used in life clinics of America clinics. Once he perfected this device, he presented it to the FDA. It's a class one medical device which required FDA evaluation for clearance. And it, so for this type of medical device, the FDA either clears it or it doesn't. And his FDA device was uh, very effective, and so the FDA did clear it as an FDA cleared medical device. The device itself uses controlled heated air. So there is an extremely narrow temperature range uh, that the device uses. Too cool won't kill the lice in the eggs. Too warm would be damaging to a child or to a person. So the range of temperature is controlled. The rate of airflow, the velocity is controlled. The direction of the airflow and the time that the heated air is applied to the scalp. This is all controlled with the device. And so the device works to dehydrate and desiccate both live lice and, more importantly, or as importantly, the nits. And as we know, if you can kill the live lice, but the nits, if they're not killed, will hatch and people end up with these chronic lice cases that you see in your schools. And that leads to such a source of frustration for people. They don't understand why. They've killed the lice, and yet they keep coming back. And that's really the fascinating thing about this FDA clear technology is that it kills the nits as well as the lice. In addition to the FDA cleared air LA device, we use dimethicone. Dimethicone is a, a, a silicone um, derivative. It is extremely safe, and there have been multiple published studies in the literature that it kills live lice. It does not kill the eggs, but it kills live lice by suffocating them. So when the dimethicone is used in conjunction with our air LA device, which is part of the protocol used in our lice clinics, um, then it really ensures a uh, successful treatment, kind of a one and done fully successful uh, treatment of a head lice infestation. So now we're going to talk about um, 
the challenges that we at Life Clinics of America know that you faced in your schools. Um, and it's not just dealing with the child with life, but also often dealing with their parents. So although we all know that life is not a school problem, since lice are often identified in the school, parents end up thinking it's a school problem, thinking that it's the school or the school nurse to blame. And of course, as the school nurse and the medical expert in the school, you're the front line. So you take the brunt of all of the frustration and annoyance that happens when those letters get sent home and parents are frantic and concerned. And as I alluded to earlier, you all have, you know, your resources are spread very thin. You have to manage a lot of different medical issues within the school. And having to then talk parents off the ledge or deal with irate parents is just another, you know, suck on your time that you really don't have you really don't have either the energy or the or should you have to to manage and then of course there are those repeat offender families who you identify life you send them home and the child returns with life and it's not necessarily that the parents or the family is to blame it may be that they are going home going to the pharmacy, buying a treatment, applying it, thinking that they've taken care of the, pro the problem, but of course with Superlife, the treatment isn't working. It can also be a lack of understanding, a lack of education about life, about the life cycle of life, how lives are spread. Um, so one of the things that we can do at Life Clinics of America is be a resource to you to help you in educating these families. Finally, some people may just be overwhelmed and frustrated and feel incredibly helpless and not know how to manage a life infestation and so kind of turn away from it. And there can be multiple re reasons for that. It might be financial. It might be that they've tried and the treatments have failed. And of course, this can lead to sometimes drastic measures that families may take to get rid of life. And we know, you know, we all see in the media every couple of years there are those tragic cases where a teenager can't stand it and douses her head in gasoline or the grandmother tries to soak the young children's clothes in kerosene in the basement and the furnace, you know, ignites the kerosene. And, you know, tragic results for something that's actually not dangerous and not, doesn't result in any diseases but is a huge nuisance and frustration. So as far as life goes in the schools, I have a couple of concerns. Um, not, just does, not only does life just affect the child, but also it affects the classroom, it affects the entire school, and it really ends up affecting, affecting the wider community. It's that nasty ripple effect where the child then leaves school and goes to extracurricular activities or organized sports or girl guides or brownies, any of those things, and then the entire community becomes affected. I have a colleague, her name is Dr. Shirley Gordon, and she does research on how life affects a child, both outside of the home, for instance, in the school environment or daycare or after school programs, but also within their own family. And the term that is most often uh, used when describing a life infestation is disgust. So that people feel disgust when they hear about life. People find people who have life. They think they're disgusting. We know that life has nothing to do with uh, socioeconomic status, with hygiene, a very privileged private school as, is as likely to have a life infestation as is an inner city, city school. However, people are disgusted with life. So when a child has life, um, this 
really affects how they are treated by their peers. And as healthcare professionals, that's concerning for us. We know that children who are ostracized or bullied or socially isolated go on to have long-term self-esteem problems, which can translate into multiple significant medical uh, issues. And so the way that children are treated by their peers is very concerning. Also, teachers and coaches and school administrators are people. So we understand life. However, teachers and coaches are, can be disgusted by life, frightened of life, and this will obviously interact with how they will will obviously affect how they interact with the child, and those behaviors are noticed by the other children. Other children see those and mimic those behaviors, and so that's really a concern to me as well. What I found shocking was not only outside of the family, but also within the family. Uh, there is disgust when life is brought into the home. So there may be blame placed on the child. The child may be isolated from the family unit because of fear of other people get of other family members getting it. They may be ostracized or bullied by their siblings. The parents may be angry at the child. So the child suffers even in their safe place, even in their home. And the effects of this are extremely concerning. Um, the other thing that can happen is that the family can focus so much attention on the child with head lice that they don't, and they don't understand how head lice are transmitted, that they fail to recognize others in the environment could be affected or may have been how the child became affected. So, you know, looking at the nanny, looking at grandparents, looking at a caregiver, um, and the lack of understanding of the environmental factors and how everybody that's, you know, close to the child needs to be treated or needs to be evaluated can contribute to those chronic cases um, that you have to manage and are so difficult. So, Life Clinics of America, you know, understands how challenging these, these issues are for you. And not only can we provide treatment, which is highly effective with our FDA cleared device, but also, you know, your local clinics can be a resource for you. They have all sorts of educational material. They can come in and do talks in your school about, how, you know, how life is transmitted. Um, simple steps that you can take to try and reduce the transmission risk. We can do more webinars. We can send families home with combs. Um, so there's a lot of uh, information that your local clinics and that we at Life Clinics of America Corporate and me myself as the National Medical Director can provide for you. So if there's something that you feel that we could do for you or for your school community, please reach out to us. We'd like to partner with you. We'd really like to be able to help you. And between the treatments and the education, hopefully we can all work together to break this chronic life cycle. So, you know, as I alluded to when I first interviewed with Life Clinics of America, I was in one of those places where you never think you'll be, where you'll be the life doctor. But I was really taken by the people by here, by their commitment, and by their mission. So on the slide, as you can see, their mission is to provide the safest and most effective treatment options that work, for, that work every time for everyone. So, you know, Life Clinics of America really wants to help you help families. Um, lice, a lice infestation is damaging on so many levels. You know, we've talked about the social implications. Of course, there's the time missed from school, the educational implications uh, where kids are not coming to school for long periods of time. This can result in them feeling behind in school, behavior problems. Uh, there's problems for the family with missed time from work. So we really want to be able to help you manage these issues. 
As we know, LICE is an equal opportunity investor, no socioeconomic issues, no hygiene issues. So LICE Connects of America has treatments to address all budgets and programs to help families manage the financial burden of managing a LICE, inf lice infestation. So we have three different treatment options. Um, and I'll go through each of those with you and explain the differences. Um, the first treatment is our signature air allay treatment. And on the right-hand side of your slide, you can see our FDA-cleared air allay device, which has special, the special tips that direct the airflow in an appropriate way and will kill not only the live life, but also kill the nits. The signature air LA treatment is a three-step process. We have over 200,000 uh, treatments, uh, treatment history in the United States as, and additional treatments internationally. And with that substantial treatment history, we have less than 1% retreatment rate. So it really is a one and done uh, you know, treatment. Um, the three-step process includes the air allay, uh, the use of the air allay FDA cleared machine. This is a about a 30-minute process. The machine is applied to the scalp in a specific overlapping pattern to make sure that we get every single hair follicle, every area of the scalp, and uh, desiccate and kill both the live lice and the nits. Following this, that takes about 30 minutes. Following this, uh, there's a comb out, and this is really a, a cosmetic thing. It is to remove the dead debris, the dead nits, and the dead lice from the hair. And following this, we use dimethicone. Uh, the dimethicone is a proprietary formula that is applied to the scalp and the hair. And the reason that we do that is just on the off chance that one or two lice live lice have managed to escape the heated air, have scurried away from the area. Uh, the dimethicone, as we know from studies, kills live lice. This entire treatment can be done in as little as 90 minutes. That's usually the maximum amount of time that it takes. And it really is 99% plus effective. Uh, as I said, over 200,000 treatments and a less than 1% retreatment rate. So that's our signature air LA treatment. We also have an express treatment, which is uh, more affordable than the signature air LA, less expensive. And the reason is that we don't do the comb out to remove the dead debris. As I mentioned, that's really cosmetic. People don't like to go home with dead lice and dead eggs in their hair. And of course, even though we know that a no-knit policy does not change the incidence of lice in a school. Um, they've done studies with schools that have no knit policies and schools that don't. No difference in the um, cases of head lice and how often it happens. However, the comb out takes the, uh, our employees' time, and so by eliminating that step, we can reduce the cost. So the express treatment includes the use of the air LA device uh, to kill the lice and nits followed by application of dimethicone, and then the families do the comb out at home, and they are, they are supplied with a comb and instructed how to do that by the experts in our clinics. Last, we have the do-it-yourself option, which is the home treatment kit. This kit is sold in our life clinics, so it comes with the expert advice of our uh, clinic owners and the ARLA operators. It also comes with a video to show people what to do and with written directions. This is um, our proprietary formula of dimethicone in a patented applicator, um, and the, the product has been clinically tested. So we have studies to show that it is, it is effective and that it's easy to use. The patented applicator allows for easy application of the formula to the to the hair, and then an easy comb through. Um, 
The dimethicone, as we know, does not kill the eggs. So if people choose to use the home treatment kit, they need to do a retreatment in 10 days in order to make sure that when those eggs, those eggs hatch, we catch the next batch of live lice before they mature and are able to start laying eggs themselves. So the retreatment ensures um, elimination of those chronic lice cases. One thing that I'm really excited to be able to share with you is that we are rolling out uh, shortly our clinically tested prevention products. And you can see the Life Preventer Kit on the left side of your slide. And again, this is based on the scientific research which shows how dimethicone kills lice. This is something that families who have been managing lice or who have dealt with a lice infestation and are completely freaked out and continually concerned that it's going to happen again because it's been so disruptive, they can use the preventer kit once a week. And we know that weekly application of dimethicone will kill any live lice, and if it's done once a week, um, it will keep kids lice free. This uh, proprietary formula, as I mentioned, has been clinically tested and it has a built-in shampooing agent so that it's really easy uh, to wash the product out of the hair without any sort of greasy residue. And although this is not available yet, as I said, it will be rolling out within the next couple of weeks, it will be available on Amazon and it will be available in our Life Clinics. So if you go to Life Clinics of America, uh, and search uh, under your local clinic, you just simply put in uh, your zip code, it will bring up your local clinic and you'll know where you'll be able to find that product. So between these three different treatment options and the preventer kit, um, we have something that is really, something that will be able to be used by people of all different budgets and really speaks to our mission of how we would really like to help all families who are dealing with this problem. Um, one of the things when I was approached by Life Clinics of America that I, one of the reasons that I was interested in this job is that having worked in the insurance industry for a couple of years, I was aware of what information is necessary for uh, families to be able to have the possibility of insurance reimbursement. and. The, the Life Clinics of America felt very strongly that, and we feel very strongly, that we're using an FDA-cleared medical device. We provide a treatment that nobody else can, can provide with significant efficacy, uh, almost 100%. So um, we really felt that this was a treatment that was reimbursable. So I knew that I'd be able to help Life Clinics of America put together and a health insurance reimbursement program. So we have developed a health insurance claim form. You can see it on the right side of your screen. It has all of the necessary information that clients can use to submit for reimbursement for the services that they've received at our clinics. This form was put together with, um, you know, we met with legal counsel, in order to ensure that it was appropriate, we gathered all of the information necessary to develop this form. So this will be filled out in the clinics at the time of treatment, handed to our clients. They will then submit for their insurance uh, to their insurance company for reimbursement. And we do also have processes in place to deal with the denial, um, including uh, the ability to get a letter of medical necessity for the treatment, um, and that will be provided by myself um, as the National Medical Director in conjunction with the clinic owners and the treatment, the, operate, the operator who provided the treatment, along with information specific to that particular client, including you know, prior treatment failures, um, those, those types of things. So um, that's a really exciting thing that we've been able to just recently uh, roll out, and it's, I, we really feel that it's added great value to our service. Um, relating back to our mission of helping all families, 
we recognized that there was a need for low-income families who have Medicaid to be able to have the opportunity to receive the services that the Life Clinics of America are able to provide. And so we actually looked to the school system, to the reduced lunch program, and we modeled a program uh, for Medicaid. Again, we made sure that we had uh, legal advice so that we have all of the appropriate uh, HIPAA compliance issues managed. Um, but with a valid Medicaid card and number, we are able to provide uh, our Aralay ex uh, express treatment to Medicaid families for uh, substantially reduced cost. And the parent organization um, reimburses the clinics for that because we feel that strongly that everybody needs to have the opportunity to um, receive our services. And finally, uh, FSA and HSA cards, uh, we have been processing those for a number of years for our services um, without any difficulty. So uh, with all of that information, um, I'd like to thank you, first of all, so much for uh, taking part of your busy day to learn about the services that we have to offer and um, really hoping that we will be able to partner together to help you with some of your difficult cases and the challenges that you face of life in the school system. And at this point, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. So the first question is, do your clinics offer school on-site head checks? So, Yes, the clinics um, are more than happy to be a resource to your schools if needed. Um, so I think the best thing would be to contact your local clinic. And again, you go to lifeclinicsofamerica.com and there's a clinic finder there. Uh, you simply put in your zip code and um, that will bring up the closest clinic to your location. And then you could talk to those clinic uh, owners about the services that they would be willing to provide. But I know the clinic owners are anxious to be a resource to you. Um, you know, like I said, they'd be happy to come into the schools, to, to talk to your families, to provide you with life combs, that kind of thing. So uh, absolutely happy to be a resource in any way possible. Okay, the next question is, are you available to speak to our school district? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Be very happy to speak to any school districts. Um, you know, feel free to contact uh, me, um, and that can be done uh, through Life Clinics of America website, or uh, if you wanted to email medical at Larada, it's L-A-R-A-D-A sciences.com, those emails come directly to me. And I'm very happy to be a resource to you, uh, to, to speak to your school, to do a webinar, whatever you think will be helpful. Can you, uh, the next question is, can you treat preschoolers? So when we got FDA clearance for our Air LA device, uh, we needed to put some restrictions on the device. And one of the things that we uh, did was decide that it was probably not um, a good idea to use the ARLA device in children who are under the age of four. So from four years old on, we can use the device, um, but we don't treat children with the ARLA device under the age of four, the reason being that it is heated air. We have no, uh, no incidences of people being injured from the heated air device. However, we were concerned that younger children may not be able to uh, communicate effectively that if, if they were uncomfortable in any way from the treatment. And so uh, we put that restriction on ourselves for the use of the device. There are, of course, um, other options, including the, the application of dimethicone. Those children would require a retreatment because, as we know, dimethicone does not kill um, the nits um, or the eggs, but it does kill live lice. 
and that is safe to use in preschool age children. So we have um, someone from New York saying the treatment sounds like a miracle for a couple chronic cases in our school. I'm glad you feel that way. We think it is a miracle. I mean, really, you know, the clinics, um, you'd have to check with your, your local clinic because, uh, you know, the clinics vary in what they offer as far as a guarantee. However, all of the clinics stand behind their, uh, especially their full service treatment, provided that other family members and contacts have been checked and cleared. And most clinics offer, on average, a 30-day full-service uh, guarantee. Um, so, you know, within 30 days, if families have concerns, they can come back. But as I said, with the signature RLA treatment, over 200,000 uh, cases and less than 1% retreatment rate. I'm sorry, I need to tell you that the, the way to get a hold of me is medical at lifeclinicsofamerica.com. So I, I gave you the wrong website before, wrong email address. I apologize. It's medical at lifeclinicsofamerica.com. Um, another question is, is, I have seen your company at an ASN conference in the past. Will you be there this year? So um, I will not be at the National Association of yes, NASN. Yeah, I will not be at the National Association of School Nurses Conference this year. Although I'd love to be invited, so please feel free. <laughs> uh, but I have met um, Nina Fakaris, who is the president elect of the uh, National Association of School Nurses. I met her in January and I uh, had a great conversation with her. She was really excited about um, our treatments, uh, what they can do for especially those really difficult chronic cases that you all are managing. And I will be at the uh, Oregon uh, Association of School Nurse Conference next month, and Nina is from Oregon, and so I will have the opportunity to meet with her again. Uh, so. Unfortunately, not at the National Association meeting this year, but definitely have met with Nina. We'll meet her again next month and uh, would be happy to come next time. Uh, next question is, we are a low-income school. I don't think that our families can even afford $20. So, yeah, uh, you know, we recognize that there are some income brackets that make any kind of treatment extremely challenging. Um, so, but we're, we're anxious to help all, you know, all families. Um, one interesting statistic is that when people, when we get what we call RID and NICS refugees, which are those people who have failed the over-the-counter uh, treatments and end up coming to our clinics sort of as a, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I can't get rid of this type thing. Um, those people, on average, have spent $92 in failed over-the-counter treatments before they come to our clinics. That's, that's not the people that choose to come to us right off the bat, and there are the, that group of people that just say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not managing this on my own. I, I need the, the help of an expert, and I'm going to find it. Um, so people are already spending a substantial amount of money on treatments that are failing. Um, so that being said, definitely go on to lifeclinicsofamerica.com, check with your local clinic, see what they're able to offer. Again, we do have that Medicaid program that, they, that you can inquire about. And especially if there are chronic cases, you know, we at corporate Life Clinics of America and me, myself, as the National Medical Director and having dealt with this both professionally and personally, you know, we really, really want to be there to help you uh, with those difficult, um, challenging, financially challenging cases. So please, you know, if you are not able to get any, um, any closure or any adequate um, assistance, then contact me. And we, we at corporate will see what we can do to help you. Because we're really anxious to be able to partner with you and to be able to provide relief for all families. 
Next question. Our school does not have a no knit policy, but we will send kids home for live bugs. Will your self product get rid of all live bugs or do some of the bugs survive the first treatment? So first of all, I'm delighted to hear that your school has a no knit policy. There are still schools that uh, that's a, that you do not have a no knit policy. There are still schools that have a no knit policy and research, I mean scientifically, there is no there is no benefit to a no knit policy. They don't work. No, a no knit policy does not reduce the incidence of um, lice, head lice infestation in a school community. They've done studies that prove this. So there's no there's no place for no-knit policies. The American Academy of Pediatrics came out a number of years ago against no-knit policies, and the National Association of School Nurses followed suit one year later and said that there was no place for no-knit policies. So I'm delighted to hear that your school does not have a no-knit policy because they don't work. Um, that being said, yes. We know that dimethicone works by suffocating live lice. It will not kill the nit. So if a child goes home with live bugs and they use the dimethicone and rinse it out, it will kill their live bugs, but it won't kill the eggs. And we know that within 10 days, those eggs are going to hatch, usually somewhere in 7 to 10 days. They hatch into what are called nymphs, which are immature lice and are not able to lay eggs. So that's why retreatment in 10 days will kill all of those nits that weren't killed with the first treatment um, that have hatched and will kill off those, those new live lice uh, before they are able to mature and lay eggs. And in that way, the retreatment will get rid of a chronic uh, case you know, will prevent a chronic case of lice infestation. So the short answer is yes. <laughs> yes, it will kill the live bugs. Okay, so, so the next program, uh, the next question is, is who do I talk to to find out more about your Medicaid program? Uh, so what you should do is call your local clinic. Contact your local clinic owner, and they will be very happy to share with you information about uh, the Medicaid program. And then, of course, if you have any further questions, you can always contact us here at medical at lifeclinicsofamerica.com. But your local, your local clinics are, are managing those programs. They're processing HSA, FSA cards. They're managing the Medicaid. They're, they're handing out the health insurance claim reimbursement forms. So they should be able to answer any questions that you have. So then we have another uh, set of questions. And she's asking, First of all, has anybody ever been burned with the heat? No. Uh, we have over, you know, we have over 200,000 treatments, as I said, in the U.S. Um, we also have clinics internationally. So we have a lot of uh, compiled data on this. Of course, in order for the device to be FDA cleared, it had to go through rigorous testing as well. But between that and our own personal um, history of treatment, there have been no cases of anybody ever being burned with the device. And uh, from the same user, I was wondering the same thing about kids getting hurt. What about NYX and RID? How do your treatment kits work better than the new kits that say they kill eggs? So the problem is the, um, is the resistance. So, um, the reason that our kits work is that, or our stuff works, is that we address, um, we, with the desiccation and dehydration, we kill both the live lice and the eggs. And the problem is the products in those over-the-counter treatments do not work against a lot of the lice. So even if they may kill some of the eggs, they're not killing the lice and those lice are resistant and they're just laying more eggs. So um, that's the problem, is that's that nasty cycle of super lice and resistance. I believe that is all the questions that we have for today. Um, if anybody has any last minute questions they'd like to type in, um, we might wait a second here. But other than that, you know, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming and thank Dr. 
our life doctor, Dr. Kristen Bauer, for, for joining us today and um, really just going over this topic so extensively. And just, you know, thank you so much. And thank you to all the participants that came in, that participated, who asked questions. Thank you all so much for joining. And uh, as Dr. Kristen mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at medical at lifeclinicsofamerica.com. Or if you go to lifeclinicsofamerica.com, please feel free to go to the clinic locator to find the clinic nearest you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.